Week 12, problem 14 from 69 says the following. You have an air conditioner system operating on total pressure of one atmosphere. Great, so you can use the chart that we have on A31. You can use, um, it's, all, it's all good, right? All known territory. And it consists of a heating section and a humidifier that supplies wet steam, saturated water vapor at 100 Celsius. Air enters the heating section at 10 Celsius and 70% relative humidity at a rate of 35 cubic meters per minute. And it leaves the humidifying section at 20 Celsius and 60% relative humidity. We are to determine the temperature and the relative humidity when it leaves the heating section, the rate of heat transfer in the heating section, and the rate of at which water is added to the air in the humidifying section. So what are we talking about here? So we have a set of properties as it's coming in, and it's coming in at 35 cubic meters per minute. And we have a set of properties at which it's leaving. So I'm gonna call this guy stage one, and I'm gonna call this guy stage three. And it's asking us, what is the relative humidity and the temperature after it leaves the heating section, so after it leaves this guy here, the heating coils, it wants to know this guy here. So this is gonna be our state two. All right, and it wants just to determine what is the um, relative humidity, that's P, that's P2. Also wants to know what's the temperature, two. It wants to know what is the rate of heat that's being added, so heating coils so are putting, putting energy in here, so it wants to know that. And I also want to know what's the mass flow rate of water, mass flow rate, oops, no way, mass rate of water that is going into this guy here. All right, so we're dealing with some new properties on this problem. Uh, one of them is the relative humidity. The other one is the specific humidity or absolute humidity, which we call omega. Okay, so for us to understand these properties, let's a few little control volume and a part a little bit that has air. We have air inside this guy in this control volume. All right? And this control volume has air and also has some water molecules in here. Right? So if you guys ever looked at the composition of your atmospheric air, there's some water there. It's mostly nitrogen and oxygen, but then you have some water too. Okay. Now according to the set of properties that we have, that is the pressure and the temperature and things like that, this air can hold more or less water. Right, and the relative humidity is how much water it has over how much it can have under those given set of properties. So let's think about it in um, droplets, the droplets of water. Right, so we have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six droplets left, and let's say that those six droplets are 100% relative humidity. That means that if I put another droplet right there, this droplet cannot be withheld by the air, so that drop is going to condense, right? It's going to get come out of this air. It cannot hold anything on it. That is what relative humidity is all about. Specific humidity or absolute humidity is the amount of water, so grams or kilograms of water, excuse me, grams of water that I have for every kilogram of air, okay? It's not related to the um, how much it can hold, but just absolute value, how much mass of water I have in relationship to how much air, mass of air I have. It's cool. So what do we know? We know that as long as we have two properties, and in this case we have two properties here and two properties here, we can define the whole state using the psychometric charts. Okay? So we can use that information to be able to define state uh, two. Right? You can define state one and three off, off the bat and use that information to define state two. Now, one thing to notice, right, before we even move on is you, a heating coil, what it's giving is it's giving energy to the system, right? And energy, in spite of uh, Newton's law, energy and mass, they cannot be confused uh, in, let's say, in two main velocities, right? So if we're down here on Earth and we have energy going in, the mass is not changing whatsoever. So the mass flow rate of air, well, that's M1, mass flow rate of air coming in, here has to be exactly the mass flow rate of two over here, right? Uh, let's do it over here. Mass flow rate of air, mass flow rate of water of air on state one has to be exactly the same mass flow rate of air on state two. Nothing changed. Likewise, 
the amount of water on one has to be exactly the same amount of water on two. Because I'm not adding or removing water when I'm going through the heating coil. I am just adding energy. Okay. So when we do our balances, we can note those things. From state two to three, however, then our mass of water is increasing, right? Because we're putting water into the system. So that's going to change. All right. Now, to solve these systems, there's uh, four, four things you can do, right? There's four, um, let's say, actions you can take. So solving, if you like, solving. Right? So solving these problems is going to require you guys to do either one of these four or all of these, right? First thing you can do is uh, get and hold energy balance. Okay, and the second thing you can do is I'm going to know mass balance. Okay, but in this case, since we have two things combined, two substances, in this case, not really substances, but air and water, you can also go ahead and do the mass balance of air. That is only of air, right? Because, for instance, when I'm going from state two to three, I'm not adding any more air, I'm just adding more water. Right, so that means that the amount of air that I'm getting on the outside, so the mass the weight here of air, has to be the same as this guy, has to be the same as this guy, because I didn't add any air, just water. And likewise, you can also do the mass for weight for. I can also do the mass balance of water. Okay, so first one is re relies on the fact that we cannot create or destroy energy, we cannot create or destroy mass. Uh, we cannot transform air into water, and you cannot transform water into air. Okay, so these are going to be your four pillars to solve all of these problems. Cool. With that said, let's define the states. Let's learn how to use a calculator, and let's all be happy about it. So state one. How do I know about state one? I know my state one has a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. That's my dry bulb temperature, and it has a relative humidity of 70%. Okay. With that information, I can go on the chart on A31, or I can use a calculator, either way, and I can extract all the other properties related to these as my charts. So let's do that together. Cool. I'm going to add a new line here. And the two properties that I have are um, temperature and temperature. And relative humidity, it's 70%. Okay. And we're going to hit calculate. Oh, we're going to have to use calculate. All right. So it spits out for me the other properties. Okay. This process that I just did in one second is a process that you guys would have to do by writing a chart, writing a ruler, and then reading out the chart to different properties. Okay. So I'm going to write down on the sheet that we're solving my entropy, that's the one, my absolute humidity, and my specific volume. Okay, so I just grabbed my specific volume one, and I did zero point three one. Also grab my entropy, that was 23.5. And I also grabbed my, uh, and that was 0 0.0052. That was kilograms of water over kilograms of air. So watch out for that unit really, because you can also use grams. Put a program, right? Just watch out for that. Okay, so note that I got all these properties just using the calculator. So I'm going to do the same thing for state three. So in state three, we also have two properties, right? We have the relative humidity of 60%. And we know the temperature is 20 Celsius. Okay, exactly the same process. And I encourage you guys to do it with me as well to make sure that you know how to do it. You don't get any problems. Um, Previous class, one student said that if you had only half the screen, you get different values because apparently the, uh, the web, this website specifically, it's it, a lot of, you know, it approximates it. So I'm going to make sure he's getting the same values that I am. This guy is 20. 
and and just like that, you have everything else. Okay, so I'm going to grab in this down here, omega for state three, and take it to state three, and my specific volume for state three. Okay. Let's try that now. I only want to do that on the bottom here so that I don't cut anything out. Okay, my specific volume three, actually, your volume three, four. My simple piece three. So, one, two, one, three. Okay, so know that we grab those guys in a click because we're using a calculator, but you can also use a chart. It's going to take you longer. It's probably going to be, might be a bit more imprecise. Okay, awesome. So, what do we need to do? We need to find the uh, state two, right? We need to find state two. What do we know about state two? Well, we know that its energy, its enthalpy, is related to the first state enthalpy plus whatever Q in is uh, being put into the system, right? So if you think about it, let's think about it this way. Um, you have a certain state of energy here, state one, and then we're giving it some energy, so it's inputting some energy. So therefore, I would expect my state two to be at a higher state of energy, right? So I could go ahead and do uh, H1 has to be equal to H, sorry, uh, H2 has to be equal to H1 plus H3. But I don't know this or this, so too many unknowns at the moment to do that. What else can we, um, what other energy balance can we do? The energy balance we can do is whatever the energy is on state three, so if I do a little control volume here, it's, it's going to be kind of overwhelming, but I'll, I'll take it away in a second. Okay. If I do a little control volume over here, all right, we're getting out here H3, and we're inputting water, and we're inputting state two. So I can do that little energy balance. Do that and do that here. So let's think about this. Do a little control volume here. In this control volume, we're having energy coming from my second state. And I have energy coming from my water, and it's leaving as state three. So that I can work with, okay? Because I'm saying that whatever state three is, I'm doing big H because the mass here and the mass here are different, has to be equal to the energy that's coming from two plus the energy that's coming from the water. So that I can work with, okay? What can I work? What can I do with that equation? Well, I can first transform it into the power form, right, the rate of energy form, which is going to give me that mass flow rate of two, two plus the mass flow rate of water and H of one. Okay, and since the mass flow rate two and three are the same, right, we talk about that because it's the same uh, air, air does not change, we can sub it in and have the same thing for both, right, so we can have this guy will be, I can actually divide everything by m three, so we're going to have H3 divided by H2 plus mass of water divided by M2 or 3, doesn't matter, it's the 2. Um, the equal of time plus water. Right, we can do that. But we kind of stop there because we, we have H3, but we don't have the other things yet. So we need to find uh, a mass flow rate 2, if we can, and the mass flow rate of water. So we can continue on. This equation. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's find this guy here. Okay, we have mm, volume flow rate coming in on state one. So volume flow rate, one, volume flow rate one as 35 meters cubed per kilogram. Since we have that, we can use that to our advantage because we also know the specific volume on one, right? So since we know specific volume is just the volume over the mass, we can see the rates for that because the two volumes have changed. We know that a mass flow rate on one will be 
the volume flow rate one divided by two to the power one. So in this case, it's going to be five meters cubed per upstack quarter per minute. Per minute divided by the unit point eighty one. Is it? Not eighty one. Meters cubed per minute. So this will give me uh, forty three. Point twenty one kilograms per minute, which I can further transform into zero point seven two. Okay, so this is the mass flow rate of air. Okay, point seventy two kilograms per second coming in at every time. And again, mass balance, right? There's no, um, air is not leaving. Where's our drawing? Air is not leaving the sky through any other way. There's no other exit for air. So it can only go from one to all the way to three. So whatever the mass flow rate of air on one has to be the same mass flow rate of air on two, which has to be the same mass flow rate of air on three. Okay, so we got one of the things that we need. So we got this guy here. Now, mass flow rate of water, that's gonna be an interesting one, okay? Well. Mass rate of water is going to be water mass balance. Okay, what is our water mass balance state? Well, we can do two water mass balances. One of them is going to confirm what we already know, and I'll do it just for the sake of it, which is, like we said, the um, water that's coming on one, and I'm going to do this. Because check out what I'm doing. I'm multiplying the amount of air that I have, mass flow rate of air, times the ratio of water that I have over air. So if you think about it, I'm doing kilograms of air divided by seconds, multiplied by the kilograms or grams of water divided by kilograms of air. So what I'm doing is mass flow rate of water, right? Now, yeah. so the one of the first one has to be equal to this one and the second one, right? And because we know that, you know this, because we know that we didn't add any water, so the omegas are the same in both cases, well, that means that that mass flow rate of one, mass flow rate of two, right? So just confirming what we just uh, saw from intuition. Okay, so that's one of the mass, water mass balances we can do. But we can do another one, right? We can do the water mass balance of the same, um, same control volume that we had before. Right. So think about it, we have water coming here from two. So that's going to be the mass flow rate of where it turns up um, omega two. We have water coming from three, that's going to be just mass flow rate of water. And it's leaving as mass flow rate of water of air three times omega three. We can do the mass water mass balance for this control volume as well. And that will tell us that mass flow rate times omega three has to be equal to the mass of water plus the mass of water coming from two. So if, if oops, sorry. So if three and two are the same, right, I can rewrite this equation as a following. The mass flow rate of water has to be equal to the mass flow rate of two or three, doesn't really matter, omega three minus Omega two. And now that I have these, now I can go back to that equation here, this equation over here, because now I have this guy too. Okay, so let me zoom out so we can have all the equations on one spot. And what I probably want to do is give myself some more space. There's a way to do this. So that we can keep going. So let's keep going here on this blue equation here. All right, so I'm gonna sub in the, uh, I'm gonna sub in the uh, mass flow rate of water. This is going to be that. So four, and three, 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 plus mass flow rate three over mass flow rate three, times, uh, three times, Okay, 
Maybe these guys are obviously the same. If you go away, so this equation is reduced to okay. So that means that my entropy three equals my entropy two plus the entropy of water omega c minus omega c. What I can do now at this point is I know that omega one and two are the same, right? So I can do omega one here going to. All right, so we can sub in, we can transform one into two because I know we're loaded the same from the start, right? So it's over here, it's over from the beginning that we talked about as well. I have omega three, I have omega one, I have uh, H three, and the entropy of water, we already we know as well, right? Because you guys are sick and tired of figuring out what's the entropy of saturated vapor at 100 Celsius. So that's something that you can do with your eyes closed by now. Okay, so that means I can find out H2. It's the only unknown that I have in that equation. So I'm going to zoom in there so we can find H2. This is probably a little bit. Yeah. Let's do this. So if I want to solve for H2, let's go ahead and do H2. I'll be uh, B minus H of water of omega B minus omega 1, which will be uh, 42, 1, 3. Minus, and then you can go to the water table, uh, water temperature table, saturated vapor at 100 Celsius, and that will be 2675.6. Omega 3 is equal to 0, 0, 0, and omega 1 is equal to 0, 0, 5, 3, Okay, so from that we get that is equal to equals thirty three point one three kilojoules per kilogram of dry air, and this is the hardest thing on this problem. Because now it's just no point of win. Just know that now we have two properties for second state, right? We know the absolute humidity and we know the enthalpy. So with that, we can go ahead and do uh, use our calculator one more time, find the property that we're looking for, which are temperature relative to humidity. Okay, so let's go. I'm gonna go down here. Show me that bit. Let's do, okay, so now eight, two, I have two things. I know this, which is the same as one. And I also know entropy two, which is 33.176. Okay, and you'll see that the software is going to, the calculator is going to approximate this directly to 33.2. I'll show you, it's gonna do it automatically. We're going to go into either our chart or our calculator and grab the topic for you. Do it. Share screen. Yes. Calculator. Boom. Add line. Uh, what do we have? We have this guy has to be the same, so it's going to be five point. This guy has to be the same. So five point thirty-two grams per kilogram. And our entropy is 33.16. This is rounded up to 33.2 already, and it's spat out all the other things. So the temperature, too, is 19.6, and the relative humidity is 37.7. Those are our answers for A. Let's go ahead and put that down in our solving. Okay, so in the chart we can grab our relative humidity, which is 37.7. And our um, temperature, T2, T2, T2 is, what was it about 19 point something, 19 point, 
Another one was 37.7, if you want to be, you don't want to partial it, 37.7. Okay, so that's part A, part A, all good. That means that we can go on to part B. And part B, <clears throat> part B asks us, what is the rate, <clears throat> sorry, rate of heat transfer in a section? So we have the heating coil, we have the heating section over there. So now we can go back to this idea here, right? <clears throat> because now we have the information that we need out of that. We know that our um, Q, should we do it here? Since we already started here, what well, makes sense? We know that our Q will simply be the Q minus H1. And if we want rate, then that means that we're going to have to, for the rate of Q, means we're going to have to do mass for the rate. Since the mass is the same for both of them, you can pick one, two, or three, doesn't really matter, they're all the same. Uh, that means that our Q that's going into the, going into the, uh, the heating section will simply be 35.2 minus 23.5. That is that. Seven. So this is part B. And part C is asking us the rate at which water is added to the air in the humidifying section. Okay. So what is it asking us? It's asking us what is uh, m, m dot w, right? That's this. What is the rate of air okay, that's being added in the humidifying section? And we've stumbled upon that before. What is it? We use that table right here. So we use this before to be able to solve part of the problem, but we didn't really um, calculate it because we didn't have to before. But now we want to part C. So the mass flow rate of water equals the mass flow rate of air <clears throat> times um, omega 3, 0, 3, 0, 0, 8, 0, 3, minus 0, 0, 5, 0, 8, 8, 8. Okay, so my mass flow rate of water Zero point zero point zero six. Okay, and just let's just check the units on this. Uh, we're doing kilograms over here per second. That is the point seven two. And we're multiplying that by kilogram of water for every kilogram of air. So our unit is kilogram of water per second. Okay, you can do that or you can do of water per second. Okay, so we could do that per minute if we wanted to, because it's too little, or we could do that in grams per second, which would be 2.4. Um, go ahead and do minutes and no point. That pretty much does it for this one, okay? Do you guys have any questions? <clears throat>